Just two interviews remain for the Denver Broncos this week as they look to wrap up their head coaching search on Thursday and Friday, including two candidates who are playing in the postseason here this week. On top of that, we take a look at Broncos restricted free agents. Who has the most value to return for Denver this year? You get that from the South Stands to the end zone on today's brand new episode, Locked on Broncos. You are Locked on Broncos, your daily Denver Broncos podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. BK, have it your way. You're having it your way here if you're listening to the Locked On Broncos podcast every single day on your favorite audio podcasting platform or whether you watch us on YouTube. I'm your host, as always, Cody Rourke, Broncos reporter from Mile High Sports, joined alongside, as always, by my co-host and good friend, Sarah Bedinger, Site expert, predominantlyorange.com. We leave a little bit of a jingle in your head for today's episode of the show as the Broncos are set to conclude their head coaching search this week with two remaining interviews between two candidates who will be facing each other this weekend in the postseason. On top of that, we take a look at Broncos restricted free agents, have some conversations about players we feel like will have value returning in 2023. Sarah, my friend, I tell you what, it's, uh, you know, between this Colorado snowstorm that we have going on, I know it's coming your way, and uh, the head coaching search, like, this is the place to be at this point in time if you're a Broncos fan. It is the place to be, Cody. I love this time of year, and regardless if the Broncos are involved or not, and obviously we'd love to see them not be involved in this time of year, but it's always interesting to see what teams are doing, how they're strategizing, who's accepting interviews where, who's declining interviews where, and the Broncos obviously have a lot going on right now. They've been in the midst of this head coach search since obviously after that Los Angeles Rams game on Christmas and the things that, you know, the fallout of that, Jerry Rosberg taking over as interim head coach. Now you're getting into the thick of a search. You're getting towards the end of it here. So barring any surprise interviews, Cody, the Broncos have really formalized and finalized a list of eight candidates, the final two of which are going to be getting looks on Thursday and Friday into the weekend here. D'Amico Ryans, defensive coordinator of the San Francisco 49ers, and Dan Quinn, defensive coordinator of the Dallas Cowboys. These two guys, you know, face off against each other's, you know, offenses in the playoffs. And really, Cody, I think that you're looking at two completely different coaching candidate possibilities here and I'd be fascinated to see who they're planning for their offensive staff but one thing I think one thing I think we need to touch on here as we know these interviews are going to happen we have known for some time now what we don't know is how any of these interviews are going behind the scenes we don't know how well Ezero Evero interviewed. We don't really know much about how well the interview with Jim Harbaugh went or Sean Payton or any of the other candidates. We, we've we heard virtually nothing. And I think that that speaks volumes to the way that Greg Penner, Broncos CEO, he's operating the search a different way than in years past. Where remember, we would go into these searches knowing that, well, Mike Munchak is the favorite or, well, you, you know, Vance Joseph is the favorite. This time around, I think people kind of have their picks, their bets on who's the favorite. I don't think we really know anything at this point, do we? No, I mean, I don't think that we do because I'll tell you this. As someone who works in this market, I try to get information. Everything is tight-lipped. And I think that's under the command of Greg Penner, which, to be honest with you, I put a tweet out on Twitter, and I was just saying, I kind of like it. I kind of like the fact that we don't know Right, Because I I look at this from maybe a guy like Greg Penner's perspective from a business standpoint, right? When you're a CEO of a a big-time billion-dollar business, and for him with Walmart specifically as the chairman, you don't let business strategies get out about what you're planning on doing because then what happens? It allows competitors to come in and maybe jump and create a different initiative that could impact what you want to do. Translate that to the football side of things. The Broncos don't want to let anything get out about how their interviews are going, specifically from a leverage standpoint, with all these teams that have vacant head coaching jobs. Greg Penner is keeping his cards close to his chest at this point in time. I like it. I honestly really like it because now it forces all of us media folks to be creative with the content that we create. We could talk about what would make this guy a great fit? What would make this guy a great fit? What is this guy's plan? Like These are questions we'll all have answered eventually when the the new head coach is announced. 
But I kind of like the fact that we really do not know who is the in-house favorite amongst Broncos executives who have the decision-making power at this point in time. And I know fans all have their preference, and we've seen that. We've seen a lot for Sean Payton. We've seen a lot for Jim Harbaugh. We've seen some advocating for Jim Caldwell. David Shaw's gotten some candidate support in, in our YouTube comments and on Twitter. But at the end of the day, it may not be any of those guys, right? Which wouldn't surprise me, but seeing how Greg Penner is choosing to operate... I think it's good, and I think it kind of separates everyone from the rat race that we all get consumed in as to, this is the favorite, this is the favorite, because you're leaving these breadcrumbs around, and the rat race, you're trying to get to the next piece, the next piece. And when you don't have that next piece or that breadcrumb or that cheese, you starve. And I think that you can't starve somebody necessarily if you don't throw those breadcrumbs out there. There are a lot of NFL insiders talking about this presumed head coaching search, but there is, no, as you mentioned, no definitive information as to where it goes. And I think that this is going to be an interesting test this weekend when we look at the Dallas Cowboys offense against D'Amico Ryan's defense in San Francisco. On the flip side, you look at the 49ers offense, which is so explosive. I mean, they might be more dangerous right now than they ever have been, especially the time when they went to the Super Bowl against KC. So you have Dan Quinn going against that high-powered 49ers offense. To me... I wonder how these guys are going to go into this interview because it's going to happen before the game. Obviously, we know that D'Amico Ryans will interview on Thursday for the job, Dan Quinn on Friday. How does this maybe impact or interfere with their preparation? Because, I mean, as a coordinator, playoff week, big-time game, you don't have a lot of time to put a real solidified game plan in place because it requires so much time. So an interview, as we all know, lasts several hours. The only thing we know about the Sean Payton interview, it lasted several hours, according to Peter Schrager. But outside of that, the term was that it went well, but we don't know any details beyond that. So for me, this head coaching search is very exciting. It is, Cody, and I think it's going to be fascinating, like you mentioned, leading up to the game because D'Amico Ryans and Dan Quinn both have experience interviewing for head coaching gigs, and so they know the drill and they kind of know maybe they have to do a little bit more research on the Broncos specifically, but Dan Quinn obviously did that last year, so it's not too different this time around, although Russell Wilson is now part of the equation, and that will certainly be a big factor, in my opinion, it should be in the in the interview process. I kind of wish the Broncos were talking to more coaching candidates about Russell Wilson, but alas, here we are. I I think the one thing that needs to be pointed out, there's not really much out there right now in terms of anybody saying D'Amico Ryans is the favorite for such and such a job. I think there's something to that because I feel like as the interviews go along, I think he's going to be one of the most impressive candidates. And I think he's going to be kind of, I don't want to say a dark horse because really he's a very qualified candidate and he's somebody who should be getting a head coaching job. I can't help but wonder, Cody, is he going to go in and blow away the Broncos ownership? Do we do fans point it out in the comments? Do we even want that? Because a lot of people are just opposed to a first time head coach in general. But I don't think you can I don't think you can do that if you're the ownership group. You can't limit yourself to, OK, well, what if what if D'Amico is the best coaching candidate from this cycle? Can you really say, well, we think you're a great candidate, but we're not going to hire you because that's your first year on the job? I I don't know. I think those are big, tough decisions to have to make. They've got to pick the right leader for this team. They've got to pick the right person to take the Broncos back into relevance, into the playoff picture. And and I think that if D'Amico Ryans is that guy, we'll see what he can do with this interview opportunity. But I just I think the preconceived notions of any of us, myself included, if we go into this thinking, well, it can't be a first time coach. So take D'Amico Ryans off the list. What if he ends up being the best coach from this cycle? I just I think you have to consider everything in this. And if you're the Denver Broncos, even more so because this is going to be a huge decision. We'll see what happens. We'll see how we'll see what the rumor mill is saying after the, all the interviews are completed, Cody. Maybe then we'll actually start getting a little clarity. Well, I think the fact that we're not hearing anything specifically about any of these interviews, I think warrants strong consideration that that could very well be a possibility for Denver with a guy like D'Amico Ryan's, a first-year head coach, or a Giro Evro. So, something to keep your eye on, Broncos country. We are curious for your thoughts on the subject matter. Two interviews remain for this Broncos head coaching search before they look to make a decision. Who is the candidate that you prefer and why? If you're watching on YouTube, drop that in the comment section down below. Interact with other members in Broncos country, or you can tweet us on Twitter with your thoughts, at Cody Rourke. NFL at Sarah Bettinger at Locked On Broncos. On today's episode of the show, though, we're continuing our free agency preview. We take a look at restricted free agents. Does 
Brett Rippon, P.J. Locke have strong enough cases to return in 2023. You get that on today's episode, Locked on Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. You get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league that is out there. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. If you love sports podcasts, you can even find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and the easiest way to get your betting fix, so head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline where the game starts. Restricted free agency is approaching the Denver Broncos alongside general free agency. March 15th is the start of the new league year where you will start to see a lot of movement around there. Now, restricted free agents are players that have accrued three or more seasons and they are under contract in a sense still. So for the Broncos, there's four guys that are set to become restricted free agents, which I mean, gives the team some leverage, but ultimately the player is allowed to negotiate a contract with any other team. It just goes back to the original team, which would be the Broncos in this situation, who have the chance to match with different tenders and things like that. So, Sarah, free agents, let's start off with two of them, restricted guys here. Brett Rippon is going to be the first guy that we talk about here. And I know Broncos country has a lot of different opinions on Brett Rippon. I I go back to the preseason and training camp where – I was there every day, and I was at every preseason game, and I was like, Brett Rippon's the guy who's running away with the quarterback two job. And everyone's like, no, it's Josh Johnson. Like, it was Brett Rippon. And the reason why is because of his knowledge of the offense, his ability to command the huddle. And I think in the two instances where we saw Russell Wilson miss a game due to injury, I thought Brett Rippon commanded the offense relatively well for Denver this past season, including a 80 completion percentage against the Arizona Cardinals who just kept blitzing Buda Baker and he would finish 21 to 26 passing a buck 97 a touchdown did have the interception and he did have I think two touchdowns of four interceptions this season but you know what at this point in time it's not always about stats it's about command of the offense and I felt like Brett did a really good job doing that, not to mention his teammates love him. The Broncos front office loves him. I want to know what your thoughts are on here and whether or not the Broncos should bring Brett Rippon back. I know I've spoken with Brett. He would love to return to Denver. Uh, He's been here since 2019, and he does have ambitions of becoming a potential coach if he ever decides to hang it up. I would love to see Brett Rippon come back, and I don't know that necessarily as the solidified QB2 Uh, you got to respect what he's been able to do, right? I think definitely he's been able to come in in some situations. I mean, we saw him beat the New York Jets a couple years ago. We saw him come in against the New York Jets in 2022 and do a really good job. You know, apparently he got lost in the sauce, although that's a different discussion for another day. I think that Brett Rippon deserves to come back, Cody, but I would be pursuing somebody that I feel could be legitimate competition for QB2. There's one game that I will point to for this. Not that it was a deciding factor in the, you know, the Broncos making the playoffs or anything, but that Kansas City game where Brett came in this year and Russell had the concussion. Obviously, he comes in, he throws the touchdown on fourth down, and all of a sudden you're like, all right, I mean, let's let it rip right now. You get an opportunity to come back and win that game late, and he throws an interception, which he has had a propensity for throwing interceptions since he's been the Broncos' backup. I think that's one area of his game where it's it's maybe like one or two decisions per time he gets out there that you're thinking to yourself like, man, what, what was he seeing here? Which I think could be the case for any quarterback, right? But he has done a really good job on the whole, I would say, bringing in somebody Obviously, you're not going to be able to have, you know, two great quarterbacks on a roster every year. A backup quarterback is what they are for a reason. Derek Carr's not going to come to Denver to be the backup. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right. I mean, that would be that would be great. But man, just to have somebody in that, you you know, you could trust in a situation like against Ken. I know that's a that's a big ask. Right. I mean, that's a that's a big thing to ask. So, I, I mean, I'm being a little unfair in that, but. That Kansas City game in particular, you have a chance to win that game. You get a drive late. He makes a bad decision. It caught it, it, you know, it ends the comeback attempt. And everybody's wondering after the game, how different could things have been if Russell had still been out there? And, and, and I think that that's one thing where it's like from your backup QB, you want to be able to see them maybe engineer a late game drive like that to be able to come back and help you win a game. Uh, in spot duty, more of like a relief pitcher than I suppose like a guy that we you could say, oh, yeah, we could have him start all 16 or 17 games and he would be QB one on a lot of other teams. That's not necessarily what I'm saying, but somebody that could compete at least to be that QB two. 
Well, and I, I think ultimately it's going to boil down to, is he going to garner some interest? I know that there have been some other teams around the league that have been interested in ripping. Like when he was on the practice squad, like Denver had to make some moves to protect him for not getting chosen. I think the Houston Texans were a team that did have significant interest in ripping. I think regardless of whatever happens, like I, I'm always going to be a big Brett Rippin fan. I think for him to be on this roster as long as he has since 2019, I think speaks volumes. Like he's made it through two different coaching staffs and heck, He's also made it through a quarterback room that had 11 or 12 different guys in it, you know, coming from training camp, preseason and whatnot. It, it's crazy to see that he's still been around. I think that's a testament to his work ethic, his knowledge, and just, I think, his ability to understand the offense and operate it. And yeah, you know, we talk about some of the decisions there are. Yeah, I think that's fair to say that he did have a couple of decisions. I mean, I even asked him after the game, remember that, you know, your Chiefs interception that you talked about. I asked him because I know that there was pressure. I know he was about to get hit. And he's like, man, he said, I, I could have swore I saw Jerry coming across, and that's where I tried to hit it. And he like he's hard on himself with that as well. But I've always appreciated Brett's ability to be open and to talk about that. I know Russell Wilson has nothing but a lot of love and respect for a guy like Rippon. So we'll see what's in the table for the Broncos this offseason. Next guy, P.J. Locke, in my opinion. I, I think the Broncos... If it were up to me, I would bring back P.J. Locke because, Sarah, I mean, another guy who's been on the roster since 2019 has been a developmental guy. He's been the Broncos, one of their key special teams guy. Heck, he was the leading tackler on special teams for them this season. He was playing the personal protector role, but then he had to transition to Gunner because of the fact, you know, guys like Mike Boone got hurt. Asang Bass, he had a couple of stints where he got hurt. Tyree Cleveland got released, was delegated just to the practice squad at that point and was never called up again. P.J. Locke, in my opinion, has also pr- proven and has shown value on the defensive side of the ball as well so for me like if it were up to me I would bring back PJ Locke I think he's developed into a very solidified player he can start for you if you need him to which I think is a great testament to have there I'm curious for your thoughts here on PJ I like PJ Locke Cody I really do I think he brings a lot of different things to the table. Like you mentioned, special teams, he had the the big play against the 49ers, right? Uh, causing the turnover late in the game. And so I think there's something there to continually look into. He had, remember we talked about this in preseason, but remember he told you about how he played nickel at Texas. And we saw that kind of come into play in the preseason. He had the interception. He undercut the route. I can't remember who the Broncos were playing in that preseason game, but all those things come flooding back to your Dallas. mind as you think about there them. We go. Dallas, that's right. That's it. Yep. So you, you think about what's the restricted free agent tender, how much are the Broncos willing to commit financially? If it's if it's under two or three million, I think absolutely that's worthwhile depth to to bring a guy like that back. It's it's a one year deal. It's not like you're, you know, you're not gonna miss that money or anything like that. It's not even guaranteed. So I think definitely, Cody, I would bring him back for sure. Broncos country, we're eager for your thoughts down below. If you're watching on YouTube or if you're listening to our favorite audio podcasting platform, share with us your decisions. If you had to choose on Brett Rippon, PJ Locke, would you bring both players back? If not, who would you bring back? We're eager for your thoughts down below. We're going to continue our free agency conversation. Two other restricted free agents for the Broncos that we'll discuss on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos. This episode of the show is brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. And if you're looking for a protein bar that tastes 100% like a candy bar, it's covered in 100% delicate milk chocolate, something you can put in the freezer or the fridge if you want a little bit more of a chewier bite. Or you could do what Sarah does, put it in the microwave and have it melt in your mouth. Not to mention the amazing, delicious flavors that they possess. There are so many, including churro peanut butter brownie and coconut you can get a box of built bar by going to built.com using promo code lock 15 you'll get 15 percent off your order or if you have a sam's club or a walmart you can head there locally a sam's club you can run in and grab a 13 bar box today or at walmart you can go to the pharmacy section and you can grab a four bar box of built today that contains brownie batter or churro from lockdown broncos you can thank us later Continuing on our conversation on today's episode, Lockdown Broncos free and available everywhere you get your podcast in audio format or whether you watch on YouTube, we just want to say thank you so much, Broncos country, for tuning in, making Lockdown Broncos your first listen of the day every single day. We have you covered with an episode to keep you up to date on all things Denver Broncos news, content, coverage, and more because for the true fan, there is never an off season. Continuing our conversation on restricted free agents, Sarah, this next candidate, in my opinion, I I felt a certain way at the beginning of the season because, you know, in, in training camp, 
he had to cover Jerry Judy in the slot pretty much every single day. And Jerry Judy was having a tremendous training camp. And so a lot of people are like, oh, why is this guy on the team? I think saying Bassey played beyond the initial value, I think most people thought. And for Bassey, the thing that impressed me the most about him was his ability to just slide into the dime package, you know, especially when there were injuries to K1 Williams or, you know, Caden Stearns. Bassey didn't hesitate. He played aggressive. And, you know, sometimes he got called for a pass interference call. I felt like there were a couple PI calls that they called on him this season. I didn't necessarily agree with, but I loved how aggressive he played. And he was also, I think, a very solid guy coming up and plugging against the run. On top of defensive value, specifically with with depth on the inside, which Denver didn't have much depth there. Bassey was the depth inside. I also felt like he had a very prominent role as one of the Broncos' core special teams guys. He was their top gunner. He was their top jammer. And he really started to get comfortable when he got a little bit more playing time defensively this year. For me personally, I don't think it would cost the Broncos much to bring a guy like a Sang Bassey back. I know that he'd like to come back to Denver. For me, I, I'm not opposed to bringing him back because I do think unless there's somebody better out there in free agency you can bring in to back up a starter like K1 Williams, I think Bassey honestly is one of the perfect fits to be able to do just that. I think so, too. I mean, Vic Fangio said it one time, and I still resonate with it. You have basically 96 starting cornerback spots in the NFL, and he says, well, there's probably not 96 guys that can fill those spots. So if you have somebody who's shown you good things at the position, just like he's saying Bassey has through the years, I think you keep that guy. You hang on to him. It's valuable to have cornerback depth, as we've seen the Broncos have had just a ton ton of turnover at that position it's been crazy how many injuries they've had to sustain how many you know players they've had to cycle through as we mentioned in an earlier episode this week the parnell motley game you know once upon a time so (laughs) we're no strangers to cycling through cornerback depth you could even go way back further remember when the broncos had to sign like ty law and guys like that i mean they they had they've had to take some desperate measures at the cornerback position for many years uh, at this point, Cody, there's a lot stick out in my mind. I, I know there's others, but Jamar man, Taylor was being get, one. Remember that? And he got Jamar ejected Taylor. and Justin Simmons had to go play corner at that point. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I remember at, uh, Pac-Man Jones. Remember when he got to wear champ, but he's the only player since champ Bailey retired to wear number 24, which I think is an absolute I joke. I can't believe they let him do that. I know. And champ just, he's probably just such a nice guy. You know, he's like, yeah, go ahead and wear it. But at the same time, he probably should have said, absolutely not. You will not be wearing that number. Uh, but, you know, the Broncos have had enough injury issues through the years that I think you could safely say bringing back he's saying Bassey is a good idea because he's quality depth, quality special teams. It's not going to cost you a ton. Remember, we're talking about restricted free agents. These are preset prices. And the Broncos can't, like, they're not going to give a second round tender to is saying Bassey. It's going to probably be an original round tender, or they'll come back to him and say, if not the original round tender, we'll pay you a little less than that. So I think definitely bringing him back, it's going to be something where he's not even counting against your top 51 as you build and assemble a 90 man roster, which people, I think we all need to understand that anybody that's listening, like your cap space is determined in the off season by your top 51 contracts. And so a lot of the guys that we talk about with restricted free agents, exclusive rights they're not even counting against your cap space because it's not in your top 51 and that's why a lot of times you know draft picks people like to talk about how much the draft picks count against your salary cap and they really don't until the start of the season so there's a lot of things that you just really don't have to worry about in terms of cap space and and these type of things and and saying Bassey is one of those guys that you're not even going to notice he's there. If you're looking up spot rack or if you're looking up over the cap, you, you won't even notice he's there. But on the field, you will notice that he's there because he's a quality contributor. I think quality depth is so important in today's NFL. And as we've seen historically, I mean, we just went through the history lesson of corner specifically. But I think general in the NFL, you need to have quality depth, especially on special teams. And I think that saying Bassey is that guy for Denver as they look to rebuild their special teams unit once again. Outside of head coach, they will have a brand new special teams coordinator and they'll be looking to try to get back on track in 2023. And speaking of special teams, let's talk about a position and a guy that realistically if you're not ever seeing his name being put out there on Twitter or hearing his name called on the broadcast, it's usually a good thing. Long snappers are people too. Jacob Bobin Moyer is 25 years old. And Sarah, I was looking at the upcoming free agents. I was looking at unrestricted guys around the NFL. Most of the unrestricted long snappers are in their 30s to mid-30s. 
Jacob Bobenmore it might be one of the youngest long snappers in the NFL right now, or has got to be in at least the top five, top six youngest long snappers. In my opinion, I think the Broncos, I mean, it's not going to cost really anything to bring him back. He did have the injury to his thumb, which put him on a brief stint on IR. In my opinion, I, I feel like he was never really an issue for Denver this year. And I think that's a good thing. Now, obviously, I think, what was it, the... Uh, it had to have been the new, was it the Houston Texans game where there was that block field goal early on? And I think a lot of that could mm. be also on McManus needing to get the ball a little bit higher. And I'm trying to remember, it was the New York Jets game as well where like Brandon McManus essentially kind of threw like Corliss Waitman and Jacob Bobenmoyer under the bus on Twitter about why it was blocked or why it was missed or something like that. In my opinion, Bobenmoyer is not really an issue for Denver. I know that they held various tryouts last year, but obviously it never equated anything, which. If you're a long snapper, if you're a Bobin wire, the fact that never did, and he still went out there and played, and, and I think played well, I think speaks volumes to the team maybe looking to bring him back. What are your thoughts on this? Because, like, long snapper, it's like they're talking about long snappers on Lockdown Broncos. Yeah, we, we t- try to talk right. about everybody, but this conversation never usually happens with shows. That's right. Yeah. You're, if you're on the 90 man roster, you matter. So I think that definitely you got to talk about long snapper. You'll look probably to the draft undrafted guys to potentially replace somebody like this. If you don't like them, who knows what the new special teams coordinator will want, what Jerry Rosberg, what's his endorsement or lack of endorsement say, (laughs) I think definitely those things will matter. But yeah, you're right, Cody. If nobody knows who your long snapper is, it's probably a good thing. So I think that there'd be 31 other NFL fan bases probably have no idea who Jacob Bobin Moyer is, which is, is, again, it's a good thing. So I think, I think there will be wholesale changes to special teams made. I don't know if he'll be part of that. I don't know if they'll just overhaul every position, long snapper, kicker, punter. I do expect though, new kicker and punter. So to kind of vamp off that and maybe tease for a future discussion that we'll have, I don't think it's going to be Brandon McManus and Corliss Waitman kicking the ball for the Broncos this coming season. So we'll kind of find out over time. But maybe Jacob Bobemoyer is the lone specialist, including returners. Maybe Montreal Washington doesn't come back either. I think he could be the lone specialist that really is retained by the next coaching staff. It's going to be a very interesting offseason, my friend. And obviously, once the new head coach is in place, we'll have a breaking news episode for you here on Lockdown Broncos. I think my prediction is going to be we'll probably hear something on Monday, which could prompt a, you know emergency podcast. And whenever the, the head coaching announcement is you know made, obviously there will be a press conference, which I'll attend, and it'll be able to provide a little more insight here on Lockdown Broncos for that. We'll also take a look at exclusive rights free agents, where really the Broncos have the say in whether or not they want to bring a guy back or not. It's really up to them at this point in time, including guys like Jonas Griffith and you, Sarah mentioned it earlier, Corliss Waitman. Will he be in the plans to return in 2023? You'll get that and much more on tomorrow's episode, Locked on Broncos.